Most would you like a second opinion on your diagnosis? Please send your analysis and medical history to visit at qs24.tv and our chief of medicine, Miss Dr. Vehicle, will analyse them for free and anonymous in our new series, Visit. For more information, visit qs24.tv. Welcome to a new episode of Visite. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you again for all your inquiries that you've sent. And I would like to deal with you today with a topic that a gentleman from Germany wrote to me. An esophageal carcinoma was diagnosed in August 2019. This esophageal cancer was then treated with chemotherapy with the initial result of tumour regression. Or, of course, the mass has decreased. And then, after a while, there was renewed growth. And now there is the question of irradiation. Tumour diseases have expanded in the last few decades. We're expecting today that 43% of women and around 52% of men will have a tumour at some point in their life. I don't say cancer because I am sick of this word because in the moment of the diagnosis it is so fearful and so negative and that's not at all what brings us forward and we have been using the same approach for our therapy for more than 70 years. We make the diagnosis and we act quickly, chemotherapy or radiation, or often operatively before that. And we, as humans, don't trust this path. But we are terrified whether we will survive this disease. To answer this question, I have to go back a little to 1938. 30 years later, Professor Warburg received the Nobel Prize for a very large research project because he discovered the transcatalase enzyme. Later, we found out through the Dr. Johan Koy, that this enzyme switches this metabolic pathway. Warburg discovered in 1938 that tumour cells have a different metabolism. A tumour cell has been a healthy cell. And this tumour cell comes distressed by life into a difficult situation. And as part of its own struggle for survival... It switches from the energy metabolism in the mitochondria, the energy power plants of our cells, to the nucleus, to the cell nucleus metabolism, with the result to survive now. With the result of not producing 38 millimoles of ATP as part of a strong energy metabolism but only three millimoles of ATP. And with the result of producing laboratory lactic acid and not carbon dioxide and water as every healthy cell does. And that is essential because the developing tumour cell no longer consumes the oxygen, but instead uses sugar to produce energy. When Warburg got the Nobel Prize, he cried bitterly and said, I don't understand medicine. You don't see this disease at all by understanding it. You don't even tell your patients what it is. And above all, you are not helping to reduce the sugar now because every tumour cell consumes 30 times more or 20 times more sugar than a healthy cell. That means the first option 
must be reducing carbohydrates. Sugar, bread, noodles, pasta. All the things that ultimately end up as sugar in the blood. This is a very important discovery. And much later, in the 80s, 90s, Dr. Frieda wrote a little book, The Development of Cancer with a Lack of Adrenaline. And she never received the medical thanks. Through her little book, she was never able to have this knowledge absorbed by oncology because she explained that when a person gets into a stressful situation, they use up adrenaline. This adrenaline can be sufficiently available over a long period of time, but at some point the adrenaline level, level falls. Then the person comes into hypocortisolism. That means that they now have too few stress factors available. They're tired, they're exhausted. But at the moment when the adrenaline falls, or has to fall, then the counter hormone rises and that is noradrenaline. That is a physiology, that is the dualism of life. When one falls, the other rises. And we doctors use this noradrenaline. For example, if you're in shock, when you decompensate with your circulation, we inject IV noradrenaline directly because noradrenaline closes the capillaries, the vessels. So the periphery is closed, but the centre, heart, brain, lungs still remain in a good blood flow volume so that the system survives for the next few minutes when it's all about survival. And this noradrenaline, if that dominates for a long time, it causes a capillary closure. And with that, the cell can become hypoxic. Hypoxia means that I now lose oxygen and the cell switches. And Johan Koi found that transcalotase gene why this switching process is taking place on an anaerobic metabolism. So, without oxygen, with enough sugar as a result, or to metabolise the sugar, lactate, laboratory, lactic acid. This is something very important that in the context of a tumour diagnosis we understand first of all what it means. The other is that when we oversee a pregnancy, then this pregnancy is necessary or possible only if the placenta is created beforehand. The placenta is very important. This placenta that is forming now for the first 12 weeks is characterised by a so-called trophoblast. This is the name of this cell in this placenta. Nowhere in our organism is growth possible so quickly in the first 12 weeks. This means that the placenta also makes room, which also destroys uterine tissue and it nests in the womb. And with that, the nest is ready for the embryo to develop there. To create the umbilical cord and so on. We measure in these 12 weeks, a beta HCG. This is a value, we use it in ovarian cancer, for example, as a tumour marker, but it's not a tumour marker, it's a biomarker. And I can tell from the beta HCG if the woman is in the third, fifth or ninth, eleventh, twelfth week of pregnancy. This trophoblast does not use oxygen. This trophoblast needs sugar. This trophoblast grows very quickly. It doesn't care about performance like the mitochondria, but about reproduction. The metabolism goes through the cell nucleus. The trophoblast does not produce 38 millimoles of energy, but three. Have you heard that before? 
Do you really believe that the body invests in life here and in destruction there? Is a tumour perhaps an act of desperation on our body? Because it no longer contain, can contain health. Don't we have to question these things? Don't we have to question them at the latest when we make a diagnosis? Why don't we look at what has not been able to regulate itself normally in our body for at least 10 years? The trophoblast is growing, the placenta is large and after week 12 this growth pauses or stops. Why does growth stop here? And why doesn't growth stop there? What's the difference here? There are immense studies on this, which is scientifically recognised. There is an organ that stops a trophoblast from growing here. But why doesn't it stop there? And do you know which organ now has sufficient enzymatic power to ensure that the beta HCG is decreased again? because it's also a measure in pregnancy diagnostics. It's the pancreas. Every patient who develops a tumour is examined for the activity of their pancreas because they need trypsin and chymotrypsin and the Woad mucos, that is a drug, a dietary supplement, which I find interesting, already says on the package, urgent enzymatic accompanying therapy with chemotherapy. Are you all getting this? And it contains these enzymes that ensure that growth stops. These are incredible reports and case studies from the past on how to enzymatically stop tumour growth. And that's why it's important to get chymotrypsin and trypsin in the form of these things at the latest please when you are undergoing chemotherapy but also at the beginning or what you need to know how healthy is my pancreas one can measure this enzymatic power you can measure the lipase you can measure the pancreatic lipase you can measure the elastase in the stool you can measure the amylase there are many pancreatic parameters that have to be measured so that you now know what led to that at this point or that point or there? A tumour could have developed. And we're talking about the esophagus now. I just wanted to make you aware that from my perspective, I couldn't offer you a better, even better therapy because the development of tumours is so multicausal at all levels that today we also say why in the esophagus? Why in the pancreas? Why in the liver or in the thyroid gland too? Causes are carried that are sometimes on a level that you are not even aware of. For example, on the psychological level. But that is going too far at this moment. I just want to first explain to you to understand that the tumour is not simply a fate and there is nothing genetically fixed or even evil somewhere. But that it is all an already big derailment of a process which is now taking on a life of its own at this weak point. We also talk about esophagus. And the esophagus is an organ that is lined with a mucous membrane. The mucous membrane guarantees 80% of our immunity. I don't really know anything about you as a patient now. But if you've been a smoker for many years, for example, then you have to risk that it will destroy your esophagus. Because this high toxicity is, of course, not only inhaled via the trachea, via the windpipe, but is also via the esophagus. I see a very, very high strain on the muscles or the mucous membrane, including the esophagus for all processes here in the mouth. 
who is really interested in oral health nowadays. So this oil pulling in the morning, pulling sunflower oil through your teeth for 10 minutes and then please spit it in the rubbish bin or spit it in the handkerchief or tissue and put it in the rubbish bin, not in the sink and not in the toilet. That means that I detoxify my mouth, my mucous membranes, but also my body through this valve. It is very important that also the oral flora, there is a high need for so-called trichomonads. These are single-celled organisms and trichomonads are actually also small structures of parasites which have the same tumour metabolism as the trophoblast, as the tumour cell. And Ms. Lebedewa, that's a Russian chemist whom I got to know in February of last year, is over 80 years old today, discovered 30 years ago. To what extent the trichomonad is also a conformal tumour cell? I wouldn't put it that way, and I'm not saying it, but I see that we have to think about these things too. Because parasites develop into tumour diseases. And the oral flora in particular provides an excellent environment for the trichomonads with every kiss, with every intercourse. So I have to worry about how do I get a regeneration here too? Is it trichomonads or not? Is it other parasites? Now it is up to you to find an answer to every question which enables you to deal with this disease for which at the moment there is only one concept and it is always like that. I have to destroy it. I have to get it out of my body. But it is a multi-causality of causes that only made the development possible at this weak point. And if I set the aggression against something, the body will respond with aggression because it feels how dramatic it is now in this life. And chemotherapy does not work locally. It always works systemically. There are colleagues in Germany who use local chemotherapy whenever necessary and whenever it isn't possible to strive for a tumour reduction, then please, with the least, but with the very least impact for the entire organism. And now I don't want to be understood as for or against, but I just want to say it's responsibility. And it does something to you, and I don't want to talk about therapeutic ways in all of this now without knowing much about you. But now I wanted you to think about what is needed of you now, and it takes knowledge. It takes a lot of knowledge, what has happened in me, and how can I help my body that intended, that tended to develop cancer. And you need to know everything. When I was at the conference three or four years ago in Baden-Baden, and a Chinese colleague pre presented five tumour cases, who is a Chinese doctor by origin, but has lived in America for 40 years. And as a military doctor, observed how strong and how sick his soldiers are who came back from a mission. So he began to deal with parasites. And it knocked me off my feet. It shook me so much that I just started looking at these questions. And he presented five metastatic treated tumour cases, all of which were healthy. And please don't ask me what the protocols were. But it was the summation of a parasitic load, which essentially had become independent. And here the trichomonads played a key causal role that through a long process of therapy have managed a derailment, relief. And with that, an immune competence has grown again, which shouldn't be underestimated either. I don't know how old you are, but I just want to tell you, 
you have been able to trust your body for decades, that it has mastered the tumour defence. Wonderfully. And an intact tumour defence includes sufficient natural killer cells to mention just one thing. But if you're aluminium contaminated and you don't know about it, then nothing changes even after chemotherapy. On the contrary, you'll continue to have this attack. And more, because you may not even know whether your liver is a, can detoxify this chemotherapy in the way that you need it now. And what has actually taken care for decades to keep your tumour your tumor free that is weak, that had to become inactive. And there is no way around it for me to really look at all these things also in tumour patients in the hope to regain strength and time and structure so that the body can deal with these things. And I think we all need to be much calmer somehow. And that's why I like to look for another word so much that we take our time at the beginning, that it's never an emergency. Of course, it is an emergency when I realise my esophagus is closing, but to understand what the body needs so that it can also get a chance to get well again. And of course, the surgery is a valuable induction. And now I think about, for example, a therapy that I might send you by email. The photodynamic therapy. But that really needs the masters of photodynamic therapy because they can get to the tumours via photodynamic therapy. And for example, with bladder tumours, or if you can access them locally from here, it can be a really great, valuable option in combination with laser therapy and biological oncological tumour agents like curcumin. 2000 studies have proven that it has an anti-tumour effect. But for example, I'm not the one who pulls this out the drawer and says we have to do that. I am always the one who wants to check what is wrong with this person. And if you overlook that your adrenal gland strength is weak, if you overlook like the, the amalgam fillings are still in there, if you hold on to that cigarette that you love so much, then it gets hard, it gets really hard because it must shake you up to start a dialogue with someone at this point who does not see the tumour in isolation from you as a person. It is your own and it was able to develop and not from the arbitrariness of nature or from any concept of revenge but in a helplessness. And to feel this helplessness now which is actually spread on the physical level I think is a very crucial situation and sometimes you put your guns aside at the beginning to really know first of all to really know first of all what is wrong with me and when I go through chemotherapy just an ex as an example I have a slight selenium deficiency then I risk that completely different things will arise for me tomorrow because I can't adequately detoxify the chemotherapy and all of these things are incredibly important as part of a serious illness. Never to obstruct the way. And to accompany it with a hope that leads you in a different direction. And we as doctors are far too small to be able to make any prognoses or anything that crosses the lips easily. Neither a negative word, nor a promising healing word. We doctors are not entitled to do that at all. 
but divinity is in us humans, and to believe in divinity is to believe in life. And life always has only one goal. Live, survive, get healthy. And I can experience that. And believe me, it is not an easy path. And that is not said superficially, because I know how difficult it is. But that it is possible to take that path and that suddenly things happen. I only realised that since I've been able to work so closely with people for 12 years, as a country doctor, I didn't think that was possible in this dimension because I always had other colleagues above me in my hierarchy. And here I have an eye-to-eye relationship and really know what I'm talking about. And first I want to transfer the worst down to the necessary things. And you know, if you do the necessary things first and then know what options you have, only then the things that now seem impossible to us arise. All the best to you and see you next Sunday. I'm looking forward to it. Dear viewers, the preceding episode is an indicator for her, a holistic medical approach and does not replace visiting your family doctor. Thank you.